More comedy to come tonight here on BBC One. It's Jack D's Happy Hour in 35 minutes. And on BBC Two in a few moments, John Bird and Sarah Lancashire in Chambers. We're on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. And welcome to They Think It's All Over with Gary and Rory as an Aussie spin bowler whose career has been plagued by injury. Only this summer he strained his throat, having to shout, How's that so often? <laughs> Shame <Shameful. laughs> With David and Jonathan is a comedian who started out as a market gardener, so he'll be used to dealing with rows of immature vegetables. <laughs> We kick off the series with What's Going On, David's team. Take a look at this. Dali? Signor Eriksson. Si. Aspetta. Eh, non lo so cosa. Non lo sa. Ho una zebra. Ma? Eh. Che cos'è? Eh, non lo so cos'è. Ah, grazie Atilio, una lama. <laughs> that was Fenicles, wasn't it? Was or, indeed. Or Sir Sven, as I believe you'll soon be known. Of course. That's another one who's beaten to you, do it, David. <laughs> one night with all them letters after now. West will beat him to it. <laughs> as a proud and patriotic Englishman, may I be the first to say how proud and excited I was at the weekend to watch our brave boys defeat the Germans so magnificently. I was watching at home with my three children, or Sven, Sveniata and Svetlana, as they're now <laughs> It was absolutely, perhaps the most sensational television I've seen all year. <laughs> and I'm going to mention his name in every sentence. <laughs> I've won out. <laughs> what about Michael Owen, though, scoring three goals against the Germans? Do you know what? Fantastic. It reminded me of you. When he scored, I'm not being funny, it reminded me of you when I saw Michael Owen score three goals against the Germans, I thought, geriatric. And I thought of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we can say. <laughs> <laughs> Nil against Holland. I feel sorry for is David Beckham, of course, you know, captain of England, but he won't really appreciate the significance of the result until he learns to count to five. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't believe it when I saw it out on the scoreboard there, Germany won England. Loads of goals. <laughs> I love David Beckham because, you know, because of him. English people don't make Irish jokes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they seem to have nicked the sort of round from our show there, but it struck me that they got the best of the deal on the presenter side. They get pure pulchritude, we get the fat bloke who does ITV digital ads. <laughs> it's the correct answer for three points. Yes, indeed. Well it is indeed. That was indeed an excerpt from the Feel the Animal round from the Italian version of this show. Sven Juren Eriksson watched by his then Lazio squad manage correctly to identify a zebra and a llama. When Sven was appointed, the Daily Mail's Jeff Powell said, we've sold our birthright down the fjord to a nation of seven million skiers who spend half their lives in darkness. Whereas we, on They Think It's All Over, said, what a great idea to appoint Sven Juren Eriksson. Why, who knows, by September 2001, we could end up winning 5-1 in Munich. With goals from Owen 3, Gerard and Heskey. Possibly. <laughs> Sven Joran Eriksson claims that he lost £6 million in tax when he took up residence here as the England manager. But he still made an overall profit when he found Terry Venables' special draw. <laughs> Guys, team, here's yours. So, posh cars for the big boys there, but why the Robin Reliant at the end? It's the most embarrassing vehicle in football, apart from Andy Townsend's tactics truck. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that Premiership? Have you seen the Premiership? No, I watch all the Premier League goals on BBC News. <laughs> <laughs> I 
find it's a more in-depth coverage. <laughs> I tried to watch a premiership all the other day, and all I saw was Buffett here advertising crisps. That's all I saw. <laughs> Will it be Salt Sultan Svenlinger now? <laughs> I watched the Premiership, I must Why? say, and I'll be honest with you, I thought it was lovely. You know the best thing of all? Hardly any bloody football getting in the way. That's, <laughs> what I don't know. That's the problem with your show. I used to watch your show for the thinly veiled sexual tension between you and Lawrenson. <laughs> He'd say something leading you on like, I think Arsenal are a bit tight at the back. What about you, Gary? <laughs> Just when you're about to spill your hopes and dreams for your, for your lovely partner. They put some bloody football in! <laughs> if I were you, I'd shoot. They've started using a Nick Hancock impersonator <laughs> to try and promote I've the football on ITV. It wasn't you, though, was it, Nick? It was me, yeah. Nick, come on. Yeah. Times can't be that hard. They are that are hard. You, are you riddled with debt? Are you handcuffed with debt? I, I, look, I'll turn down Not jobs that I think are really shit. I turned down film 2001. Yeah. If you've got a big debt. <laughs> Nick, don't do that. You can consolidate your debt into one manageable monthly... <laughs> I've heard a bloke tell me about it on the TV. Shane, what sort of car do you drive? Um, a Ferrari. Oh, a Ferrari? Yes. It's, it's to do with cock size, isn't it, I think, you know? I think it correlates because um, you drive an Austin Midget, don't you, David? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, does that mean you can tell a lot about a better woman by what kind of a garage she's got? <laughs> No, I'll be able to look at my mum trimming that hedge round on down as you go. Oh. Especially when you go round and she says, just park here next to me Volvo. <laughs> it was like a Del Boy's car, wasn't it? It was a little bit. That was Ian Hart, wasn't it? Yeah. Was Ian Hart? Yeah. And the players were gathered around like it was some sort of... Was it like the worst player of the week? Worst player of the week, yeah, I'll give you three points for that. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was Leeds left-back Ian Hart driving to the recent game against Southampton in a three-wheeled Robin Reliant. The player voted the worst performer in training at Leeds is forced to take the car home on a Friday night and drive it to the match the following day. When he found out that Ian Hart had been in an embarrassing model with a plastic body, Dwight York was on the first train to Yorkshire. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three oh, points. Time now for our sporting bluff round where the teams decide who on the other side is speaking the truth and who is about as trustworthy as the England middle order facing Shane Warne. <laughs> David, Jonathan and Ed, it's those all-conquering Aussies for you. Here they are wrapping up last week's fifth test to win the series 4-1, not 5-1, but 4-1, with a catch from Shane here. And there it is. Phil Tufton has gone, caught by Warne, it slipped off McGrath. Glenn McGrath has come on from the Vauxhall end and he has suddenly wrapped up the innings, the match and the Ashes battle. Australia's winning tactics were based on the teachings of Chinese warlord Sun Tzu. Well read. <laughs> Australia's winning tactics were based on Adolf Hitler's theory of Blitzkrieg. Australia's winning tactics were based on Julius Caesar's invasion of Britain. Could, could we just have a quick look at the end of that clip again? Yeah, yeah I'm sure we can. I know what this is. That's Shane giving the traditional Australian welcome to asylum seekers, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> because, because you're a lovable nation. Yeah. No, I am. <laughs> But you know, I think, Shane, we should congratulate, because I was, uh, someone told me before the show that you've taken over, is it over 400 wickets, is that right? Yes, that's right, wow. I think you've been doing your homework very and, well. And how many of those were proper wickets and how many of those were English? <laughs> and I think further congratulations would order, because, um, someone told me... <laughs> <laughs> Shane, is it true that due to your, let's face it, slightly flashy style, the tan... Is that coming from you wearing well, that? Well, yeah, or? I know, it takes one to see one, but you, you've got the... You've got the fake tan going on there. <laughs> you've got the, the plucked eyebrows. <laughs> you've got the dye blonde out. Is it true that your teammates, they call you Hollywood? Is that why? Uh, I used to be called Hollywood, yeah. What a great nickname, Hollywood. Let me ask oh, Eastbourne here oh. if he's ever uh, been... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sun Tzu, Adolf Hitler, Julius Caesar. Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu. OK, so you think Shane was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
What I want to know is how much of that 18-page document, the writings of Sun Tzu, you actually read when your coach slipped it under the door, if you'll pardon the expression. Uh, <laughs> well, I did wake up and saw about 13 pages of notes, which is normally every day for John. Got them, opened the first page and went, Sun Tzu, rubbish, that's in the bin. <laughs> Next one, bus time, 8 o'clock, I'll keep that one. So, <laughs> you you really should have given you the English translation, is <laughs> Shame was bang on target as ever. Australia's tactics are based on 5th century Chinese warlord Sun Tzu's seminal work, The Art of War. After they won the series last week, the Australian team actually burnt the bales in their hotel room to create their own ashes. First of all, they had to tape up all the smoke alarms, a trick they learned from Phil Tufnell. <laughs> Shane here took 31 wickets this summer after going on a crash diet to get fit. In fact, he drank only mineral water at Merv Hughes's wedding. That's incredible. Merv Hughes, married. <laughs> Gary, Rory and Shane, it's the finest defender in the world for you, Dutchman Yap Stam. Can you... Oh. Something about the eye of a needle, I think. Challenged though by Stam. Stam ends another moment of hope. Now, just a week into the season, Alex Ferguson surprisingly sold his star centre-back to Lazio, but of course, he had a very good reason. What was it, David's team? Yapstam was sold by Man United because he wrote a very naughty book. Yapstam was sold by Manchester United because Alex Ferguson thought a back four containing Phil Neville and Mikhail Sylvester would be better off without the world's best centre-back. Yapstam was sold by Man United because Alex Ferguson has finally gone mad. <laughs> You're a book, shame, you? Yes, I'm just doing a book at the moment. I've been over in England for a week promoting the book. Mm. And what's, what's your book called? I thought about it long and hard and came up with something I thought was pretty original. What's it? My autobiography. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Who's, and who's it by? <laughs> <laughs> Let me think. I'm not sure. <laughs> that is just shameless plugging, isn't it? Yeah. That is just shameless. Yeah. Plug something. Well, I haven't written a book because I was too busy writing these shows I've been forming at the Ambassador's Theatre. <laughs> From the 10th to the 22nd of September. <laughs> Have you finished this book then, have you, Shane? Yes. Now it's all going very well. The people have been coming all over the country, which has been fantastic. That's so always good news. <laughs> <laughs> no. They've been turning up for signing that sessions, which like has been wonderful. That sounds like my kind of book. <laughs> sounds like my kind of book tour. <laughs> now they've been turning up, which has been wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Um, I think it was, it was yours, Ed. Ed. There's no point looking in my eye, by the way, because I actually don't know if I've got the right answer or not. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't actually so it can't me. be you, they would have told you. Yes. The right I told they you, that's David. 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 Okay, so you think David is telling the truth? Let's see. So David had it right, although I'd have accepted all three, frankly. Uh, we're asked to believe that Stan was sold for purely footballing reasons in the same week that his book was published. Among other Stam revelations was the fact that Gary and Phil Neville are busy little c**ts. They're always the first to arrive for everything, whether it's training, meetings or away matches. Yes, first to arrive for everything except the ball. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. Our excuses round now, Gary's team. Here are the closing moments of the triangular one-day tournament when Australia beat Pakistan in the final at Lords. Well, there's a big shot from Adam Gilchrist. One run to win. And there it is. Full toss from Mood. Four runs. Adam Gilchrist. Now, psychologists have finally discovered the real reason why Australia always win everything and England, Pakistan and the rest lose. So what is it? Is it because they're all non-drinking, non-smoking, finely honed athletes, Shane? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're descended from convicts makes them run really fast. <laughs> Distractions in Australia, aren't they? Like culture and things like that. <laughs> England have been on the right track, they've been playing okay. I think we outplayed in this series, but. Um... Don't patronise us. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind me pointing someone out? Go okay, for it, mate. You look a bit gay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go to Old Compton Street on your own. That's all. You <laughs> what about you and I come and we'll hold hands and walk down there? Yeah, but you see, I'm beyond gay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so true, I've yeah. gone food gain out the other side. Oh! <laughs> oh! 
That's smart! <laughs> If, if the two of you were to walk along Old Compton Street together, you would look like one of his clients. We just look like him. <laughs> 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 what a lovely couple. Everyone's saying it. I'm the only one who's got the courage and is friendly enough to you, and I consider myself a close friend now. Yep. <laughs> Tell you to your face. Well, you've got it. So let's get out the back. We'll just sort this thing out. <laughs> there you go. He's admitted to it now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm coming out of the closet. I'm finally coming out of the closet. If only I had the cash. I oh, know. Exactly. <laughs> Jane, I should tell you, Jonathan tell says this to every single guest we oh, have. So don't worry about it. It's not just you. Make it feel better. Although this time he meant it. <laughs> I've got no idea. The only thing I do is stab in the dark. Look don't at start again. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'll say the, the colour, yellow, because we're yellow. Is the correct answer for three? Oh, yeah. All right. Yes, thank you. According to British psychologists, sports people perform better when wearing yellow than any other colour. Blue, as worn by England's one-day team, is the worst colour of all, whereas green, the colour of Pakistan's uniform, tends to make sportsmen over-relax. If only David Garrett had a yellow rinse instead of a blue one, we'd have won all those <laughs> tests. <laughs> and it works brilliantly in the Tour de France. A bloke in yellow always wins that. <laughs> David's team, it's the recent World Athletics Championships in Edmonton for you and yet another disaster for the British Sprint Relay team. Christian Martin's on a good bend and young John Barber will get the baton in the lead just about. I can't believe that. And for Great Britain, it's deja vu. Now, it obviously wasn't the British team's fault that they failed to pass the baton. We've actually found seven excuses uh, given for the debacle. We want two of them for the three points. Is it just that being black and living in Britain, they have an innate fear of battens? <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Bill Elton. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> Thank God for last Saturday's magnificent victory against Germany. Otherwise, apart from that, up until now, it had been pretty poor for British sport, hadn't it? Mm -hmm. It had been terrible. Up until that moment, I believe that the lead runners for Sports Personnel of the Year had been the bloke out of score in the Daily Mirror and a pot of glue <laughs> that used to be Shergar. <laughs> Speaking as an amateur psychologist, there's a lot in common with the relay and the epidemic of wife swapping which is sweeping the countryside. <laughs> if you see the man running as the husband and the bat on as his good lady wife, he passes it from one to the other. <laughs> now, I have never been to a swingers party, I hasten to add, despite the many, many phone calls of invitation that come my way on an almost daily basis from the Lineker household. However, <laughs> Why did I see that one? Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, because you made the phone calls. <laughs> they hadn't trained together, they hadn't um, spent enough time together, darling. Yeah, I'll give you that as one. I'll give you that as one. What excuses do you use, David, when you lost test matches? Well, the other mob are better. <laughs> no, that wasn't, doesn't work if you've dropped the baton. Yeah. You can't drop the baton because yeah. the guy well, next yeah. to you passed the baton really well. Yeah. <laughs> I was so, I was so dazzled. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some of them were involved in other events, was that part of it? Yeah, I'll give you that, I'll give you three points. Yeah, that was one of them as well. well yes, the reasons in full were, one, the World Championship came too soon after the Olympics, two, the sprinting coach didn't fly out with the team, three, the runners were too tired after their individual events to perform, four, in terms of depth, we're too shallow, <laughs> Five, it's difficult to get the team together to practice. Six, they thought they had so much experience, they didn't need as much practice as other teams. Seven, the team didn't actually practice at all. <laughs> so let's get this straight. For the second major championship running, we failed at the vital discipline of not dropping a stick. Something even the Queen Mum can manage, and she's got two. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have nine points, and Gary's team have nine points. Time now for our regulars to flounce around in the dark as we play our feely round. And this week, as a tribute to Sven Juran Eriksson, we're going to play Feel the Animal. Oh. It's David and Jonathan first this week, if Come you'd on, like David. to. I've got, I've, got it. I've got it. Feel the Animal. Oh. David, I've got very high hopes for this week. Let's go and feel Jonathan for a while. You know they try, they always try and tie it into something topical to do with what's going on in the sports mm. world, David, okay? Yeah. And I've got the feeling, and what's the big name in sport this week? It's Sven. Sven yeah. wouldn't come on. Well, next to Sven, I'm hopeful all of that Italian girlfriend they need something. Yeah. <laughs> it's a snake. And can we have our first mystery guest, please? Aww. 
Settle. David, I heard him go arse. They must be quite small and cute. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Andy, time starts now. I think I've got the front end. Hmm, I see. Oh, is That's it, it sound like you? Is it Christine Hamilton? <laughs> Christine Hamilton. It looks like Christine from here. I've got a lizard. I've got a lizard here somewhere. What's this bit going over here? It's sort of a ball. Okay. <laughs> it's, um, it's an Oompa Loompa. <laughs> Is it the one wearing the Newcastle United strip? Yes. Well, yeah. it's the zebra then. Here's your correct answer. Ah, what a car. You look great above your fireplace, wouldn't you? You've got one gap left. Have you, have you, got, your, have you got your blunderbuss with Shame you? on you. Shame on you. <laughs> OK, thank right. you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Well done. I can't believe... We got a zebra into a TV studio and it didn't even shit on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Gary and Rory, to your places, llama. please. It might be a llama, it might not. <laughs> Can we have our second mystery beast, please? <laughs> It's going to be good. This is going to be great. OK, gentlemen. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Shane, if you're watching, put a video in now. <laughs> oh, my God. It's going to go, go mental when it realises you're wearing its ante. It's a bit of a giveaway. Oh, no. Calm down. What, what, OK. okay. Wait. Now, when you come to feel this I'm particular... Scared. You're going to have to go down low. Be careful not to tread on it. And your what? time... <laughs> and your time... <laughs> Your time starts now. It's... <laughs> Rory, second. Rory, it's fine. It's, it's only little. Oh, I get off. I'm not um, anywhere near anything. Shane. Yeah? Do you want to help us with this? Pig's ass. I mean, no way. I'm getting up there. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> no way. I'm not touching a pig's ass. <laughs> I'm getting it. <laughs> I hope, I've got it. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I tell you what, I hope it wants to mate. <laughs> I've got Come it. on! I've got it, Gary! What is Come it? on! Gary, I've got it! Come on! Uh, it's, it's a mosquito! <laughs> Come on! There we are! You haven't Jesse. <laughs> I should get three points for bravery. I would have but it's not brave if you've got a blindfold on. The moment the blindfold came off, they're both pissed off. <laughs> what? They get no points no. for cowardice. Oh. <laughs> Let me ask me that. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was one of your better throws as well, Dave. <laughs> At the end of that round, Gary's team have nine points and David's team have twelve. And we can now see that round again using Terry Venable's Prozone. Here are Gary and Rory coming out, taking their positions and going back again. It makes it all that much clearer, doesn't it? <laughs> we draw proceedings to a close by playing the name game. The leaders goes first, which is David's team. Could you please, Ed, pass those along to Jonathan? Come as many names as you can in 90 seconds, starting now. OK, uh, he is our Lord Howard Father, the new... The the yeah, there you yeah, go, OK, OK. Second one is, uh, it's the noise that Jerry Halliwell's dog makes. It's also the noise that yeah. Jerry Halliwell yep, makes. Yeah, Yeah, there you go. And the second, oh, well, that's Sam, well done. OK, this mu he must be American with them like that. It's, uh, if, you, if, you, if you were an American, you called your daddy, you would say you wouldn't call him daddy, Pop. you'd call him Pop. And the second name, if you, if you got horribly something very hot on you, 
it will be a... Burned. Pop burned. Um, OK. <laughs> this one first. The, the gay fella sitting over there. Uh, with, uh... <laughs> oh, Rory Gary. Gary. Shane. Shane Moore. There you go. OK. <laughs> this one. If you were, if you were uh, South African or Australian, you'd come up, and if someone had... Uh, if there'd been an incendiary incident in your domicile, you'd say, Oh, awesome. no, look at my... It's been... Burnt. Dead, dead. Burnt, and burnt, it's burnt, my... Where I live burnt. in my... House. My burnt house. That's it. OK. <laughs> You're almost there, there aren't you? There, were, <laughs> there was a series of films, there's two of them so oh, far. Good. The first one had Buzz and Woody in, the second one had Buzz Toy and Story. Woody, a toy. Thank you very much. Also the name of that Filipino girl you've been seeing, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> um, remember the, the DJ, Alan something Freeman? And the second name is a, is a caddy. Sorry, showing our age now. The first Sorry. part of his name is Moo. Why who does that? Cow. OK, and the second part is Anne, so it's Fluff Cowan. OK. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if, you were, if you were in the Dickens book and you wanted some more gruel and you said, please, sir, can I have oh, some more? Your name would be. OK, Follow and the second yeah. name, back in the 60s, this was considered a very fine idea. All right. Free love. Oh, so no more. I think Come we on, may boy. have to take one point off for the fluff oh, cow. No, I'm sorry. Way face I'm so true. That's me. <laughs> so you're on to 18, which oh, means God. that 10 will win it for you. You can pass those to Rory, please. Come on, Rory. Well, and your time starts now. Um, Hattrick Hero, not Jeff Hurst. Uh, Michael Owen. Tactics truck driver. <laughs> Andy Townsend. It was one of the flop in the team, the relay team. You know, he's, his, his oh. surname is the, the, the description of the uh, De second uh, Westerly most county in England. De Devonish, more. You're very Devonish. good. Oh. Uh, uh, same name as me, plays with um, you. Rory. No, surname, you tosser. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, first name, nice one. Cyril. Second name, you know what you do to lollipops? <laughs> you lick them. <laughs> Thank you, Casper. Uh, Giles, was a, I think it was a tennis player called something Giles, wasn't it? it was a sports no. no, no, not. <laughs> Croft. Croft, that's right, Croft. Yeah, there was. Isabel. You smell of alligators. Annabelle. Annabelle, Annabelle is very Annabelle. clear. And you know well, what you do Annabelle. when you're not licking or sucking the wind do? What does the wind do? Blowing. Very good. This is a, a <laughs> this, <laughs> an extinct bird. Dodo. Dodo, yes, yes. This is... Done it? Yeah. <laughs> it's very similar to the last one, remember that? And it's what doggies... Uh, doggies... Do do. Do do this. Yes, that's right. <laughs> So, Gary Seam have 17 points, but this week's winners is David Seam with 18. So, our thanks to Gary, Rory and Shane, David, Jonathan and Ed. We're all off to enjoy it while it lasts. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. They think it's all over, same time, 9.30 next Friday. Ruby Wax and Lee Evans with Patrick Kilty live in 35 minutes on BBC One after the news. <laughs>